Hi, everyone. Morning. 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 I'm kind of nervous. This is my first time in the transatlantic for my presentation. So, okay. We put our pants on just like you. Well, James, make <laughs> sure if you make a mistake, we'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My talk is a major strategy of the patient achievement in ICU. And just before Nikolai presented you the physiology, so most of what I'm talking about here is the pathology. And that's very important. And ICU basically is our target. But so our product is target ICU. What common features are ICU? You see the patients from the, in the ICU, from the surgery, from the cardiac surgery, or you see the patients transfer from the medical unit. You see the patients with a shock state come from the emergency. But why, what are the common features? The common feature of the patient condition is hemodynamic instability. And may involve one, sing one singular or multiple organ dysfunction. So any kind of patient come, that's the base. Hemostatic instability and organ dysfunction. And these conditions could be potentially reversible to normal with timely, aggressively, and goal-oriented interventions. And these interventions will rely on a dynamic and constant monitoring. The technology were applied in the ICU will be most advanced. And our cost study is one of the most advanced. Next, I will talking about some common problems in the ICU, like the heart failure, like a shock, like a congenital heart disease. Heart failure, I heard you. Lots of the good questions. Excuse, excuse, excuse. Where yes, are I'm looking for, for the notes. Where are we here? He uh, changed the presentation. Oh, yeah. The presentation. yeah. Uh, we don't have full set of notes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, Sorry okay. for that. Okay. But later on, you can get this. <laughs> Heart failure is very important. About 5 million people in the United States got heart failure. And it and contributes. 30,000, 300,000 deaths of this for this reason. And I heard you ask a lot of questions about injection fractions. So the heart failure is defined by four grades, grade one is normal. If the injection fraction is over 60, that's normal. And it 40 to 90, grade 2, mild. And uh, 20 to 39 is severe. And the most severe is the last 20. And we also know you also have a test, the anatomy of the heart. So there are four chambers, two heart, left heart, right heart. For the left heart failure, we're talking about is a systolic. We also say that is a systolic heart failure. That's very important. Most of the part is the left heart. So you're, we're talking about the contractility. We're talking about the consumption delivery of the oxygen. Most is from the left heart. Left heart supplies the whole body, whole organs, including brain, liver, kidney, all the important organs through the left heart. So left heart failure is because of reduced left ventricle contractile functions. Unable to maintain adequate cardio to meet the organ demands. So here, for the left ventricle, left heart, most affected will be cardio, affect the, the contractility. And the 
parameters were measured is cardiac output, injection fractions, and left ventricle wager pressure. That's the, because of the failure that were caused all these parameters affected. And for the treatment, for the left ventricle, left heart failure, you need, because of affecting the contractilities, so you basically will increase the heart work. So you will use the medication. You, I know tropic like dopamine, dopamine, and digoxin. Why emphasize this? Because it's different from the right heart failure. So with this parameters we know is the left heart failure, we will use this treatment. Right heart failure. Right heart failure is a diastolic dysfunction. So the heart work with diastole and constraint. Basically, left ventricle is constraint with systolic, with the contraction of the heart, pumping out the breath. And this one, right heart failure, is a diastole and involved in the blood sucking in the heart. So that's different. And the parameters could be, the cardiac operator could be normal. Injection fraction could be normal. So there's a difference here. And this is a very important to know. Because of the difference, so your treatment will be different. So doctors will rely on these parameters, what we will provide for medication. Like the left ventricle, left heart failure, then will be used the but for the right one, you should avoid, yes? So the, what you say normal will be cardiac output injection fraction, so what will be not normal? Up here, good question. Here, the central venous pressure will be not normal. Will be abnormal. So we like, we, we just talk to the normal range. Yes, yeah, so like the two to eight, that could be normal, central, uh, central venous pressure. And it could be minus. But here, if for the right heart failure, that would be increased. Increase 20, 30. The central venous pressure is measured by a catheter inserted to the right atrium. And this is also very important. Our system is established a connection with the central venous catheter. Uh, EDV is end of diastole volume. So it's kind of preload. But uh, in clinical, basically, Firstly, the patient will have left heart failure. After that, will have a right heart failure. Then it comes to a full heart failure. And for that treatment, you need to treat, practice the treatable causes. What kind of causes will be, we will treat that. And the pathology is like left ventral failure caused by Formerly, cast the pressure increase and have a high pressure and cause the right ventricle pressure to increase. And after that, the CVP, central venous pressure increase, that affects the blood sucking in. So you, you, you picture the, the image of the whole anatomy of the heart. You can say, Left, right, uh, because of the left uh, effect, uh, damage then affect uh, the right side. Then, uh, as a whole, the full heart failure. So, yes, please. In left heart fibrillation, let's say a mild left heart fibrillation, how would that impact CO cardiac output? Uh, that's, a, that's a very good question like atrial fibrillations will affect the cardiac output frequently because every minute, the, the, the 
atrial fibrations in the change of the heart rate. The heart rate could be increased dramatically to 300 and up in second, in, in, in minutes of a second, change it to 200. It's kind of the heart pumping is a disturbance. So for that one, it will be rely on the, at that moment, cardio. And at every moment, the cardio output is changing. Because we know the formula, cardio output equals heart rate times stroke volume. So the heart rate change instant. There's no stable heart rate. Yes. Are these slides available to us? We'll, yes, we'll, we'll send them to you. Yes, we'll send them to you. Where is, is wedge pressure a right heart failure issue? Uh, wedge, wedge pressure is caused by the left heart failure. Okay. Because of the left heart failure, that will increase the pressure. Okay. With the pressure increase the before the pulmonary artery. So this increase and the pulmonary artery pressure is also increased. Okay, okay. okay. so that is where it's measured? Or is it the way it's measured? Uh, pulmonary artery. That should be measured, only, only measured by the swan gas. Right. Okay. And that's why some you know, technology we advanced but certain parameters we still need to rely on. But we know the swan gas have a own, its own disadvantages. It's dangerous, it's a risk, it's time consuming. But uh, for this parameter, that's very important. And that is only, that till now is only being measured by the swan gas. Okay, next. So I talk about the heart failure. We have left heart failure, right heart failure, and a full heart failure, and the different and different mm -hmm. treatment. And here, the congenital heart disease is a, also a big category. It estimates, it estimates that eight out of, of every 1,000 infants have the heart defects. And there is a certain thousand cases have the operation. What's the structure of the congenital heart disease? Basically two. You can also picture back to the anatomy, heart structures. Left, right. There's a hole between. Normally there's a septum. Separate the left and the right. With this defector, could be there's a hole in the septum. If the hole in the between the left atrium and the right atrium, there will be the ASD called atrium septal defector. There's a hole in the septum or between the heart, right atrium, left atrium, and the VSD is the ventricle septal defector. This kind of word is so common used in clinical. So is it you also know that. Is it possible for an infant to have both? Mm -hmm. Is it possible for an infant to have both? Mm -hmm. uh, and ventricle septum? Could be. Could be. Yes. It's rare, but yes. The left to the right is, norm, is normally because we know the pressure in the left heart is higher. So basically, the blood follow will be go from the left side to the right side. And we also know that left side, the oxygen contention is higher, is much higher. And the right side is kind of low. So basically, you, the pressure will push the blood or push the high content oxygen blood to the right side. So basically, that kind is not so severe compared with the second one from the right side to the left side. 
and this one, right to left shown, that very simple. But fortunately, this case is kind of the prevalence is kind of low, so that's good news. But for this, you need immediate surgery. So the pathology is because of the pressure and oxygen oxygenation. Why say right to left is more risk? Because the right side is a low oxygen and the left side is a high oxygen. When right to transfer to the left, so the low oxygen to the high oxygen, and the left ventricle is pumped out to supply the, all the systems. So that's the big part. like the septal in the atrium, you could be different holes in different, different uh, like the uh, atrium or, or, or the ventricles. Right. That could be the combined defectors. So this is the most common pathology, like ASD, VSD is very common. So the patient is very common. And this TOF or catalog of fellows is not so common, but basically the right to left is not common. And this one is common in the left to left, right to left shunt is common. And of course we have some other, you know, the, lot of the other uh, diseases. And that is not so common. So what we are talking about here is the, the common ones, common ones. But uh, yeah, the case is, uh, could be. And the treatment is the repair, the surgery. And the monitoring is CVP, central venous pressure, P PCWP or PAWP, pulmonary artery wager pressure, and the saturations, AV saturation, artery saturation, and venous saturation. That's very important, very, very important. The in clinical doctors want to know what the saturation. And that gave a lot of idea, ideas. And the QSQT. Next. Well, what is QSQT? It's a shunt, uh, different, different shirts, the ratio of the shunt. Hold on. To, to follow up Carrie's question, I understand there's a hole that goes from the, the left to the right, but it, what's the difference between when it goes from right to left? Is there another hole? Or are the holes similar or are they different? What's, Okay. okay, I didn't follow that. Uh, okay, that's a very good question. That's very important also. VSD, first play, will be from the left to the right. But with the timing, you know, so with the periods of the pathology, constantly will increase the, also increase the right side pressure mm -hmm. and increase the right side of the muscle. And with that muscle increase, could be increase of pressure, and uh, combined with some other pathology conditions, 
could be right side pension more than left side. They will go back. Right. That actually is the end of space. So the same, same hole can go back both ways? Can go both ways. Ah, okay. By the pressure gradient. Okay. <coughs> but uh, here, this case, there's a different situations. Not only the VSD, ventricle separate defector, but also have a pathology with a transplantation. And usually the aorta should be come from the left ventricle. But for some reasons, it uh, transpo transposed to the right side. So that will be increase the pressure. So we have two conditions. Actually, these are four conditions. Heterologic, there are four conditions. And these two basic conditions, one have the VSD. There's a hole at the ventral septums. There's a go back and slow. And another pathological condition is the aorta is transposed to the right side. So that will be increased dramatically of the right side. And in that case, will be push the breath from the right to the left. Okay. So this is a pediatric congenital disease. Okay, shock. Sure. Uh, very briefly, there's four types of the shock. Hypovolemic, septic, cardiogenic, and epileptic, uh, or allerg allergic. So the most important is septic shock. And it is a very, very common. We, you were you were sick. It's really common in the ICU. Okay, next. The sepatic shock. Sepatic shock is in the blood line. So if the clinically have the sepatic shock, the suggestion or the guideline will be insert the swan gate. Yes? So septic shock is one of the most dangerous, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hey, yeah, yeah the, uh, go back to the last slide, the mortality is more, is higher, 50 to 60, that's the average, rate. but the severe septic shock would be very high. So a patient may be the, even higher than 80 percent. So if it's septic, that's very, very dangerous. And yes. Yeah, so this is a, uh, what you say, that this is very important for us to be, this is where our patients are, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. This one, Maybe I could take more time on yes, this please. one. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Next. So it's a, in the, it's a guideline to insert the small gate because here, this parameter is very, very important with small gate, the monitoring. The CVP, central venous pressure, the EDVI is endodiastole volumes index, and the CI is cardiac index, and the SVO2 is a situation of venous oxygen. And we have one important I missed here in the PCWP. Very, very important. And all these parameters of will. Question? And all these parameters used to as a guideline. With, with these parameters, of what we should do and work here. The resuscitation, first place. Fluid, large amount of fluid you infuse. It. And the second, antibiotics. Because we know that hepatic shock is caused by the infections, severe infections. And the bacteria, the age, the bacteria is go through the whole body through the blood circulation. And this is a very briefly. And the next. This one is very, very important for us. And actually, it's the most important part for the doctors because the mortality is so high, so what we should do, what kind of step we need to take, what kind of interventions at that moment of time. So, uh, sepatic shock basically is a dramatic decrease of the blood pressure, the, as low as you couldn't measure it with a normal 